<laughs> Eternal God, our Father, we are so grateful that you have blessed us to be present on this day, this day that we've not seen nor experienced. But Lord, we anticipate your divine presence in this place. For in your presence there is fullness of joy, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. In Jesus' name, we pray your blessings over our gathering this morning. Amen.
Wonderful, wonderful. Praise the Lord, everybody. Isn't God worthy of our praise? All the time. God is good? All the time? And worthy of our praise. Good morning, everyone. I'm glad that you're here today to worship God in spirit and in truth with us. And uh, we're glad that the dust has settled. Hello. No more debating, no more arguing who's going to be who. God has his way. Amen. Always. So we welcome you this morning and we'd like to um, bring you some information concerning our whereabouts and what's going on in the neighborhood. And um, first thing we'd like to mention is that tomorrow we will be celebrating Veterans Day. Amen. And this is a prelude, today is a prelude of what's going to take place on tomorrow as we celebrate those men and women who have served this country faithfully and with all of their strength and ability to help preserve democracy. Amen? Amen. So we give God praise for that. And we'd like to bring to your attention uh, a few things. First of all, we would like to uh, remind you that the shoe boxes will be due next Sunday. You have to have your shoe box done and here next Sunday because we have to turn those in to uh, the distribution center uh, where they're going to collect them and um, ship them off to, um, to the children who are in need. Also, um, we are office is closed tomorrow because of Veterans Day, and um, we would like for you to um, uh, to have some time off and recognize the contributions that others have made. And hopefully, the time that you have off, you will remember at eleven o'clock to be here. Hello, <laughs> and then you can spend the rest of that day celebrating uh, Veterans Day. Uh, also, the uh, floral arrangement is in honor of Veterans Day tomorrow, and uh, Hal and Diana purchased that for the veterans' uh, service on, on tomorrow uh, morning. So we, we look forward to that, and I'm just going over this bulletin here. Also, on the 24th of November will be our annual uh, meeting. And uh, for a few minutes in the service, we'll be conducting our annual meeting, bringing you up to date in regards to our affairs and what we're going to be doing uh, for the future. Well, having said that, um, let's prepare ourselves to sing where? Faith of Our Fathers, right? And you have it in your um, bulletin. So please stand with us and let us sing together.
standing, let us pause for a moment of silent prayer. Father, thank you for your faithfulness to us. Amen. You may be seated. somebody proud this morning. I don't know who it was, but I think it was me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear John. Happy see that coming, did you? <laughs> Welcome the indoor clan this morning, celebrating mom's birthday. Let us pray. Father God, we're so grateful for your loving kindness, Lord, that is renewed to us and your mercy that endures forever. Father, you have given us reason for hope. And you have given us a promise that can never be broken, that you will provide a place for us, and that you will return and receive us into your eternal presence. Lord, we praise you for family, and we thank you for putting us in family, Lord, not just our biological family, but a family called the family of God. And Lord, we are so grateful that you give us this moment in time in history to remember and recall the blessings that you've bestowed upon us. Father, we pray your blessings on those who are sick and afflicted. We ask that you will provide healing and a touch of deliverance for them. Lord, we pray for Charles Dadis and Lord, we ask your blessings upon his household. Thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness and how you have blessed him. And Father, those who grieve the loss of their loved ones, you're the God of all comfort. And Father, we pray that you will comfort those who are in that place of memories and that place of vacancies. Father, we know that you can fill up every vacancy with your divine presence. And Lord, as you've taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us take this opportunity and sing about a person that we know so dearly. Who is that person we know so dearly? Jesus. All three verses? We are going to sing all three verses. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Let us stand again for our doxology. <laughs> Father God, we thank you for the ability to give as unto the Lord. We pray that you would receive this offering for those who have given out of their abundance and those out of their need. May it be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, let me move this. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. Today, to start, I was thinking, why is Veterans Day so special for me? And I decided I'd share a little bit about that with you this morning. So, Veterans Day for me is special. I've been privileged to have four very important men in my life who were all veterans in different services. My father ran away and joined the Royal Navy when he was 16 years old unbeknownst to his mother, <laughs> and just became a radio engineer. And then along came World War II, and they called on him again. So he, he served again for a short time during World War II. Fast forward, I grew up um, in England, and one day I met this man who was an American serviceman. He was serving in England in the Air Force, the US Air Force, during the time of Vietnam. And we married, and he served for 10 years in the Air Force, and during that 10 years, we moved 13 times, with two children under the age of seven. And three of those moves were international moves. So I know what it's like to be a spouse as well. Which, was, which is why I, I understand the military life. It is sometimes fun, it's adventurous, and sometimes scary, and it's not easy. But um, it's a good life, and I owe the military so much. That is how I got to the United States. And my life changed a lot. I compare sometimes my life with my sister's lives, and I am so grateful. I, I had um, the good fortune to meet another veteran, not, not by, it was just by chance. Um, he served in the Navy. Amen. And, uh, <laughs> Pastor Bill, amen. <laughs> One of the proudest moments, I will tell you, though, was the day I was standing in the kitchen. It was Christmas time. My youngest son had enlisted around September after high school. He enlisted in the army. And I'm standing at the kitchen sink, washing the dishes. It's Christmas morning. And my son came up behind me, I didn't hear him, he tapped me on the shoulder, and I turned around, and there was my grown-up kid son standing in front of me in full dress uniform. I will never forget that sight. I was so proud, so proud. And he served for four years, so that is why I honor veterans on Veterans Day. And uh, I, I'm just really grateful to, to them and to my country. So um, I'm going to sing a little something for you right now. <laughs> Beside her 
from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam god bless america my home sweet home god bless america my home sweet home from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with You know, out of all my years being here, it, been, it hasn't been a lot as, as your pastor, but she was quiet and so reserved, <laughs> and you just wouldn't notice her. <laughs> but now, oh, praise the Lord, somebody. <laughs> The Lord will light a fire up under us if we keep close to him. Uh, we've been sharing with you our, our theme for, for the month of November. Thanks for giving us is our theme. Thanks for giving us. Thanks for giving us. And our thanksgiving is going toward God for what he has done in our lives. And last week we shared with you three things that we were thankful for. I'm sure you remember those because you wrote notes and uh, you're not a forgetful person. You always remember the important things just in case you didn't remember them. <laughs> I want to remind you. The first thing was we thank God for life. Hallelujah, somebody. We thank God for life, for these bodies of clay, and we know that these bodies of clay are not the bodies of clay that we began with. Amen. They began to take abuse. They began to break down upon us. They began to remind us that we're going to go back to the beginning when we were created, the body of clay came from the earth. So eventually, that body is going to go back to the earth. And the second thing we were thanking God for is the liberty that God gave us. When God created Adam and Eve, they had liberty. They walked around. They had fellowship with God. They were free. And they had freedom of choice. They had free will. God didn't make them as robots. The robots are being made now. Hello. To take our place. But nothing can take the place of what God has created in mankind. So we thank God for, for that. And the third thing was we thank God in all that he's done and the fellowship that Adam and Eve had in the garden was joyful. We thank God for joy, the joy that they had. The scripture reminds us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And in his presence, there is fullness of joy. So their lives were filled with joy until sin entered in and disrupted everything and made us who we are today and we are so confused. People are still trying to find themselves and still trying to discover what their purpose is. 
And uh, you know what your purpose is because you're here uh, to praise God and worship him in spirit and in truth. And what I want to share with you this morning is four other things, and you have those in your bulletin. And we're going to go down the line and uh, t talk a few minutes about those things. Our scripture text was found in the book of Lam Lamentations this morning, chapter 3, verse 22 through 23. And it says, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are renewed every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I am so glad that we can depend on somebody. Hello. Somebody to tell us the truth. Somebody that will not deceive us. Somebody that we can trust and rely upon. And the only person that I feel that I can trust and truly rely upon is God. He is faithful and he is just. The book of Lamentations was written because of Judah's continued idolatry in which God allowed the Babylonians to take them and bring them into siege. They allowed the Babylonians to take over and destroy the temple in Jerusalem and burn it down to the ground, Solomon's temple. The place where they gathered to worship, the place that they encountered and reflected upon God's mercy. It was to be prayed Lamentations was to be prayed and sung in worship services, asking God for forgiveness and seeking restoration to a covenant relationship. People don't understand what a covenant relationship is. A covenant cannot be broken. So when we stand before God as husband and wife and we are in covenant with God and wife and Husband, we're saying that this can't be broken. Wow, it's quiet, quiet in here. I hear you breathing. Let me move on. But because of our human nature, we break covenants. God does not break a covenant with you and I. He is committed to our success. He is committed to our relationship. When Adam and Eve rebelled against God in the Garden of Eden, they received a death sentence after they had eaten the forbidden fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They had no idea what death was. They had no understanding what death was. That was not in their vocabulary. But God says that you're going to die if you disobey. And here comes the devil saying, oh, you're not really going to die. You're going to be just like God. Well, they were already just like God. They were holy. They were without sin. They were perfect. They were pure. And here he comes planting seeds of doubt and curiosity. And so they fell. And in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 through 17, it says, and, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may eat freely, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Their sins broke their covenant with God. Death was not imminent. They didn't just fall and, and die when they ate the fruit. Their lives were no longer the same. Life, liberty, and joy had restricted their relationship with the intimacy of God because of their sin and rebellion. God created us for relationship. And we have freedom of will. We could say, God, I'm not ready, and many do. Because they look at God as religion. God looks at you 
as a creature in need of relationship. He created you for relationship. They were removed from the Garden of Eden and the Tree of Life because if they had eaten from the Tree of Life, they would have lived ever, forever, in a state of condemnation, in a state of never, ever coming into a relationship with God. God was not satisfied with that. He, take, he took them out of the garden, preventing them from eating its fruit where they freely worshiped God, had access to God. Their sins resulted in separation from God, spiritual death as well as physical death, loss of righteousness, cursed the environment, guilt, shame, hiding from God, and people are still trying to hide from God. You can't hide. You can run, but you can't hide. God is am omnipresent. He's everywhere. The enemy, without fail, aims to destroy the place of worship that fortifies our souls. He destroyed their relationship in the Garden of Eden where they worshiped God freely and there was a closeness. So the enemy continues to want us to worship him as opposed to worshiping God. So thanks for giving us mercy. Thanks for giving us mercy. Thanks for giving us mercy. God's mercy endures forever. From generation to generation, God's mercy is enduring. And I'm so grateful for that. Because you and I have done some things, or maybe just me. Maybe it was just me that needed the mercy. Just Bill. <laughs> but I'm here because of God's mercy. Because there was a death sentence to my life. And we'll talk a little more about that along the way. Scripture text Jeremiah 29, 11 and 12 says, For I know the thoughts that I think up toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil. I am so grateful that God, when he thinks about me, he doesn't think evil thoughts. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Now, there are people sometimes that are in our lives, when we think of them, not so good thoughts because of the wickedness that they have done, because of the things that they've done. When we think of them, we don't have good thoughts. But God, when he thinks of us, he has good thoughts because he created us in his image and in his likeness. And we are to be a reflection of him in the earth. Verse 12, then... You will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you because God has planned a future for us and a hope. Praise God for that. God created us for an eternal relationship, not a momentary relationship, not until we got tired of each other. Well, you go your way, I go my way. No, God wanted us to know him intimately and hear his voice and feel and sense when he's present. You know, you can sense when evil is present. You can sense that. Your spirit can sense when evil is present. So God wanted us to know that when he is present, we can sense his divine presence because he has given us as believers and sealed us as believers with his Holy Spirit. And spirit bears witness with spirit. Even though the sentence of death had passed on from generation to generation, God planned to send his only begotten son to redeem all humanity and give us an eternal hope. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. 
Sing it. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. So we build our hope on Jesus Christ. I may not have got all the verses right, but the Bible says make a joyful noise unto the Lord. So I was trying to be joyful. But my hope is built on the validity that God loves me. On the validity that God cares about my eternal security. On the validity that he wants a relationship with me. Just as you as parents and grandparents and great-grandparents want relationship with all of those who look like you. Especially. And even those that don't look like you. They're yours, praise the Lord. You want relationship. God wants the same thing with us. And we are the ones to say yay or nay. Sometimes free will is not good. I remember when my, when my uh, son was a child. And he would get corrected for things that he, he did wrong. And he would ask his sister, well, tell me, you know, uh, tell me, you know, don't allow me to do it. Help me not to do it. But he had free will. And when the temptation came, what did he do? He did what he didn't want to do. And that's what happens to us as human beings. When the temptation comes, we know that we don't want to, but we do it anyway because we are lured into the satisfaction of what it may feel like, how we may feel about disobedience. Psalm 62, verse 5 and 6 is for God alone, my soul wait in silence and my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. Now I want you to know that this season, and we're coming into a, a, a different season, I want you to know that everything that you have relied upon, everything that you have trusted in your life, everything that you've loved, everything that you've cared about, will be tested. We're coming into a season of great testing. Now, for those of you that don't believe in God, whatever it is that you trust, that's going to be tested. So if you just mainly believe in yourself and not believe in the power of God, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to be in your place. I want to be assured that I will survive the test. Everything is going to be tested. So we praise God. We give God thanks for hope. We have hope. Because of God's grace and his mercy and his love for us. Our scripture text in Daniel 9, 9, it says, To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness. Through, though we have rebelled against him, we have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws which he set before us by his servants the prophets. And this is Old Testament. So we see that the problem of being obedient to God and being submissive to God is old. It's old. It's the struggle of humanity. It is the struggle of doing what is right and you know what's right. The Bible says there's a way that appears to man that is right. But what is the end result? The end result is death. Because the way of God 
is right. They that seek me, are they going to be disappointed? The scripture says, they that seek me shall find me. If you acknowledge me in all of your ways, I am going to direct your path. Wow, what blessings. What blessings. That, that, there's no text in there that says, I'm going to be confused. He says, if you acknowledge me in all of your ways, I'm going to direct you. And sometimes we don't want direction, do we? Men, I know the way. Your wife said, well, you just missed the turn. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to get anybody in trouble here. <laughs> Mainly myself. We are all born with a sinful nature to rebel against the authority of God in pursuit of selfish pleasure. That is in our human nature. We want to be happy at any cost. God did not promise us happiness. He promised us joy. And the joy can be unspeakable and full of God's glory. He has given us all that we need. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we're all in the same bucket or boat or ship or train or plane or here. We're all in the same condition. We need to be forgiven and redeemed. God offers forgiveness before repentance because Jesus atoned for our sins by his death, burial, and resurrection. So God offers repentance. He offers it. He offers forgiveness. He offers it. We are the ones who have to receive it and accept it. When we repent, he forgives us, Cast our sins into the sea of forgetfulness, and to be remembered no more. God does not remember our sins because he has cast them in the sea of forgetfulness. Now, you have a problem. You have a problem. Here's the problem. If God has forgiven us, we must accept the forgiveness. Hello? If the word says he forgives you, you've got to accept the forgiveness and forgive yourself and not allow the enemy, the devil, to do a replay. You know what a replay is, right? You basketball players, you football players, you athletes, they press the button and replay the event that occurred. So the devil wants to replay your sin before you so you never feel like God has fully delivered you, that God has fully forgiven you. He will replay that, and you have the authority to rebuke him and say, devil, you are a liar. I have been forgiven of that. I walk in forgiveness. I live in forgiveness. It's getting awful quiet in here. Now, if you get uncomfortable, you can always drop an H-bomb every now and then. Hallelujah. See, somebody was telling you what the H-bomb is. So, you know, free up the atmosphere. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, there may be people in your life that you earnestly ask them to forgive you. And they let you know that they haven't forgiven you. Because they keep bringing it up. Well, I remember you said. I remember you, you did. I remember. I remember. God isn't like that. He tosses it. So, as we have prayed, Father, forgive me of my, what? Trespasses or sins. How? As what? Come on, Bible scholars. As I forgive those who have trespassed. 
against me. So you've got to forgive to what? Be forgiven. I love the way it works. Thanks for giving us forgiveness. Thanks for forgiving us, Lord, that you forgive me of my sins. You forgive me of my transgressions, and you want to restore me into the right relationship. Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 17 through 18, it says, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, no cattle in the stalls, yet I will, I will what? 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 Just like when your team wins. Hallelujah, somebody. You rejoice. You rejoice. You're a winner. Praise God. You rejoice. And you're not ashamed of your rejoicing, are you? Some of you give chest bumps. Some of us don't. Don't chest bump me. My surgery still, my, my stitches still are, are tender. Don't chest bump me. But you rejoice, and we rejoice in the victory that God has given us. When things look bleak and the spirit of despair and discouragement upon the land, we will rejoice. For the Lord God is our salvation. We have more reason to rejoice than to be sad. Come on. People ask me, how are you doing? You look like somebody I know in the Bible. <laughs> People ask me, how are you doing? You know what my response is? Blessed beyond measure. Can you keep count of the blessings that God has bestowed upon you from your birth to where you are in life now. Can't keep count. So if I have the expression that I am blessed beyond measure, believe it. Because I am. I am blessed because the enemy wants to take us out. But the God that I serve says, your days are numbered and he doesn't know what the number of your days are. So just keep living for me, keep moving forward, and I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you my favor, and I'm going to open doors that no man can open, and I'm going to close doors that no man can close. I am going to order your steps because I know the plans I have for you, plans of life and, and not destruction. So we thank God for salvation. Hallelujah, somebody that we can be made in right standing with God. So when he looks upon us, because of the blood of Jesus Christ has been applied to our lives, he doesn't see our sin because it's been covered by the blood of Jesus. And now, to the last and final thought. Your application Throughout the ages, God has never, ever failed to demonstrate his favor to those who call upon his name in faith. Now, if we want to make America an honorable nation, here is the formula. I didn't say great. I said, an honorable nation, here is the formula. And I'm, I'm, I'm so amazed that, you know, all of these government officials want to do this and want to do that and want to do this and help the people here and help the people there. And here's the formula. You ready for it? Are you going to remember it? Are you going to do it? 
2 Chronicles 2.14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. That's the formula for making America an honorable nation and a great place to live. Father God, we're so grateful for this time that we've had to share your love with one another. Thank you, Lord, that you are yet bringing people into relationship because of the great need, the great need to hear from you. Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit will do his office work in our hearts. For, Lord, we know that you're not willing that any person born of a woman would ever die and spend eternity without having access into your presence. Father God, we pray that you'd move upon hearts and minds and, and souls that they don't have to leave here not knowing where they're going to end up but Lord when our number is up we can know that we're going to be in your eternal presence and we can shout the victory that home at last we rest into your eternal presence Father we thank you Lord for those who are sharing their hearts with you now those who are having conversations with you now. Lord, I just ask that you would minister as only you can. Restore the joy of life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pray that decisions were made this morning. I pray that the scriptures that were given to you would be an anchor to your soul so that you will know that God loves you and he has a purpose for everything that happens in your life. And I pray that that purpose that happens in your life brings you closer to him to know that he is God he is sovereign and he has great purpose in your life God bless you thank you for your time please rise as you are able to join us in benediction